you told me that you've been you've been preaching for 40 plus years. That's and exactly I thought, right. Yeah, I just thought maybe we could get a, a TV version of a little bit of your story, if we could. Well, I was born in Welch, West Virginia, a little uh, coal mining camp in uh, McDowell County. My dad was a coal miner. And uh, he took us to a little church in Baileysville, which was another little coal mining camp outside of Welch. And there was a three-week revival. And in that revival, at age seven, I, I heard the voice of God call me to preach. Uh, it took me seven years to get up my courage, so I preached my first sermon when I was 14 <laughs> years old. That's nearly 10,000 sermons ago, and I have to tell you, the first one didn't go real well. Really? Well, what, what does a 14-year-old say to the congregation? Well, that's a good question. All I know is I told the congregation that I had the call to preach, and my pastor said, you will preach next Sunday night. Scared to put in Alabama, I'll tell you that right now. And so, so I said, all right. So I worked all week at study hall and got ready, and I recorded all my sermons I have over the years, but I journalized in my early days as ministered, so I recorded that I preached for five minutes, gave an altar call, went forward myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it really wasn't a great beginning. Responded to your own altar <laughs> yeah, call. Yeah, I did. I think, I think three others joined me. That's so. great. <laughs> that's an effective way to get people forward that's anyhow. Right. Come yeah. on with me. I'm yeah. going down front. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I already myself. am down yeah. front. <laughs> All the old preachers say, well, you know, bow your head, close your eyes, and come forward. I always wonder, how do you do that? You know, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Walking with your eyes closed. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Here you go. And he said, Stan. He said, I want you to promise me something. I said, what is it? He said, I want you to promise me when you talk to your son, Seth and Aaron, you'll always say, I love you. And I said, I'll do that. And he said, no, I want you to promise that. And, and I said, oh, really? So I pulled over the side of the road. I was on the cell phone going back to Phoenix Airport. And he said, raise your right hand. And so I raised my right hand. And he said, I promise, I promise that I will always tell my son, Seth and Adam, that I love them every time I talk to them. So I said, I'll do it. And then I said, Elmer, why would you call me on this day and tell me to do this? He said, well, Stan, a year ago today, my son Sam was killed in a tragic accident. And he said, I told him that I loved him. And I know that he went to his grave knowing that I loved him, his mother loved him, but I didn't tell him enough that I loved him. If every time I had talked to him, I would now, if I had do-overs, tell him that I loved him. And so since that time, I've been doing it, and it makes a world of difference in relationships when you do. All right, let's have some fun. I've got this, uh, this illusion here. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I need some more help, though. Not a bottomless bag, no zippers, a Velcro. Real quick, take your hand, put it on the inside of the bag. Try pushing. Here we are in a cafe. You have a book that's uh, got a coffee theme and a cafe theme. You want to talk about it a little bit? Well, I do. I'm very pleased to, to be on this set and to see the emphasis and to hear you talk about your caffeine early. Uh, and, you know, I've always enjoyed a great cup of coffee. My old friend Elmer Town says that, uh, that the coffee pot in the church equals fellowship. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really true. 